Good morning everyone. This is part three of the Healing Waters Oracle card reading. My apologies to my batteries went flat the other night. So I'm filming part three today. So I just did a meditation and asked my guides for any messages and they said to flow like water with ease and grace meaning to not resist the flow of life and allow flexibility whether life or waters want to take you and to flow without resistance pushing things that are too hard or not meant to be in your life. And I also want these people to um, yes, to be around water more. It's walking along the beach barefoot. It's very grounding and salt water can be healing cleansing your aura of negative energy and water is relaxing and has a high vibration it's good for renewal and refreshing and even if you don't not near the sea walking near rivers creeks or even just having having presence in the shower or bath and the sacredness of water and also I've been getting into Ma Master Emoto's work he's done as a Japanese scientist who did an experiment on freezing crystals and speaking intentions to water and the crystals that had negative words spoken to them like sick or disgust or shame had ugly or deformed shaped crystals whereas the ones where he spoke like peace and love the crystals were beautifully formed so yeah this is an interesting you can find out more about master moto's work i've forgotten his first name but um yeah, I've been getting into a lot of putting intentions into water and things as water holds memory. It's very absorbs energies and things. Anyway, get back to the. We've still got four cards left of the reading. So. This is the next card. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just getting used to my stand. This is cleansing. Let's see if the camera to focus. Releasing the old energy tune up. New beginnings. So I feel into that card. It's also good to do a meditation too before you do any intuitive work. Just trying to clear and empty the mind. And see how this picture applies to your life. Anything that is sticking out to you, symbols, images, the feeling of the card. And this is a general reading only, so take with what resonates you. It might not all apply to you, maybe just one or two things. Or it may all apply to you. So to me this card, it looks like she's crying. As um, releasing the old, as the tears and crying is a, a form of releasing sadness or old energy. And often after having a good cry, I normally feel better. Not always, sometimes I feel sad for a while, but... 
I feel like it always feels better to release these things than bottle them up. So it's releasing the old. So it's saying new beginnings. So a lot of you are having new beginnings in your life. Embrace these new beginnings and not be scared. Allow the water to wash away anything that is not needed and cleanse you. So I'm just going to read the, the guidebook, see what other messages they have. Cleansing, releasing the old, energy, energetic tune-up, new beginnings. Water has been deeply associated with both physical and spiritual cleansing since ancient times. We use water to cleanse our day, day away as we bathe and many of the world's Faith traditions use water as a means of spiritual purification from immersion to holy rivers to baptism and ritual baths. So I just let the camera focus so you can see, see the card. Pilgrims around the world journey to numerous sites for healing and cleansing qualities of their waters. The water in the grounds of Japan's Hongu Sen Senjin Taisa, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, a Shinto shrine at the foot of the sacred Mount Fuji, is seen as both deeply holy and self purifying. Flowing from the melting snow at the volcanic volcano's <clears throat> mountain summit, it forms washing pools that call people to them from near and far. Many believe that these pools are very mystical and powerful. Local legend says that the depth of the pools waters magically changes according to the size of the person who enters them adapting to the level of their submergence. While visiting the healing water sites of the world is an incredible thing to do, we don't need to travel to experiencing the healing and cleansing power of water for ourselves. You probably already use water in this way, perhaps not, although perhaps not consciously. As you shower or bathe or as you wash your hands, consider the water and call on it to support you washing away what's coming to an end or is no longer in alignment, leaving space for what you'd like to birth anew. And here is the soul inquiry. What's no longer in alignment or coming to an end? That, sorry, let's do that again. What's no longer in alignment or coming to an end that you're ready to release. So have a think about that. Okay, so that was card number nine. Oh, excuse me, I'm still waking up. Takes me a while to get going in the mornings. Okay, card number 
10. The wellspring. What are you thirsty for? Body care. Take a breath. Oh, I love this picture. She's in a healing pool. Sorry, it's just the clock. Okay. So to me, she's like protected and nurturing, resting. She's resting in the water pool and being rejuvenated. So making sure we rest when we need it, when we're tired, <laughs> we've been too busy. Okay. So I will look up what this one means. What are you thirsty for? Body care, take a breath. We don't only need water to thrive, we need it to survive. The Wellspring card often appears when things are unbalanced or when we've been pushing ourselves beyond our limits in ways that are simply unsustainable. Just like the seasons around us, we too are cyclical and thus we must pay attention to where we're expecting ourselves to be in bloom, in full bloom all year round. While we can rely on our reserves for a limited amount of time, if we allow ourselves to become depleted over a long period, to run empty, it will likely take longer to recover than it did ever before than it ever did before. We must embrace our humanity and take care of the body by slowing down, quenching our thirst and finding ways to recover and rest deeply. The Wellspring card is an invitation to look at where you've been going into overdrive, to reflect on the areas where you've been pushing yourself beyond your physical limits. To consider whether you've been forcing yourself to run on your reserves. It delivers a message to reassess the speed and force you're using. To bring more harmony and balance back into your life and trust your inner seasons. To look after yourself and appreciate your precious body. Soul inquiry. Where are you pushing yourself beyond your limits? How are you being called to care more for your body? What are you really truly thirsty for? Oh yes, this card applies to me. I'm guilty of being too busy, doing lots of things in one day and not resting enough, pushing myself, but I'm getting better. I'm trying to prioritize it. It is hard in our society to prioritize rest. You feel like I've always got to be hustling. Oh, I was just going to show you the cover of this, if you haven't seen it too. Rebecca Campbell. 
the Healing Waters Oracle Guidebook. I love this deck. Okay. And next we have card 11. Wow. It looks like dancing, moving your body more. Flowing with life, being playful. And it reminds me of that saying, dance like no one is watching. Be your free self. And have fun and not worry about what you look like. Just being in the flow and rhythm of life and creativity. So it's she who flows, ease, being open to change, go with the flow of life. It's like what I was saying before, like flowing like the water and going with the flow of life. Looks like a gateway. Water is a gateway to something. Okay, so I'll look this one up for you. She who flows, ease, being open to change, and go with the flow of life. Water is the most powerful force on our planet. It has the potential to destroy everything in its path or be embracing, still and gentle. When a river meets a rock, it doesn't try to move it. Instead, it embraces and flows around it. It doesn't question why the rock is there. It sees it as part of its path. Water teaches us how to flow with life. How to greet the obstacles on our path with open arms and receive life fully. In this way, the world's waters have literally shaped and crafted entire landscape, the entire landscape of the planet that we know and love today. Mountains and valleys, coastlines and woodlands are all the result of water embracing life. The ancient Greek goddess Rhea was the daughter of Gaia, Earth, and Uranus, Heaven. She's referred to as a psych... S I don't know how to pronounce this. Sibylle? mother of us all. In his work, Cratulus, the philosopher Plato referred to Rhea as a stream or she who flows. Perhaps Rhea herself has much to share with us about how to truly flow with what appears on our journey, whether expected or unexpected. Call on her to support you in embracing any unexpected changes you're facing. This card invites us to stop seeing the unexpected things in life as obstacles and instead treat them as invitations to embrace life. To find a way to soften and embrace what occurs rather than try to avoid it or fight it. To flow with rather than resist. Soul Inquiry what unexpected obstacles are you resisting or fighting against right now? What would happen if you embrace them as part of your path? Okay. So that was card 11 and then we've got one final card. Card, so you have a look at that. Card 12. 
Ooh, I've recovered. Okay. Okay. So this is the final card, card 12. Water codes. Ancient wisdom, the intelligence is within you. So to me, this looks like tapping into your innate talents, wisdom and gifts. And the intelligence of the mind that we can tap into when we are relaxed. And in flow. Could also mean if you believe in past lives, accessing knowledge and talents from previous lives or previous skills in this life that haven't been used for a while. And to me, this also is saying that water holds memory, and it's important the intentions you put into your life. As our bodies are, I think it's I can't remember sixty or seventy percent water. We and the emotions are water, so we are very watery beings. So this also affects our own body as well. Beautiful card. Okay, so I'll look this up in the guidebook. Water codes. Ancient wisdom, the intelligence is within you. Water has long been associated with wisdom. Celtic legend says that the goddess Keridwen had a magic cauldron in which she brewed herbs that anyone who drank from these waters would acquire great wisdom. Bridget is another Celtic goddess associated with water, particularly water wells, many of which were named in her honour. Even today, there's a huge shrine to her at Glastonbury's White Springs. It was once believed that the future king of the land had to drink Bridget's well waters to be initiated into his rule. Aha, uh -huh, he was the um, man's name I was looking for, Masura, Masuru, Masuru, Amoto, proposed that water molecules can carry our thoughts, words, and emotions. This theory, theory has the potential to change so much for humanity. Some believe that through connecting with water, consciousness, we can unlock lost wisdom. What if we could remember the lost wisdom of our ancient ancestors, learn from their mistakes and reconnect to those wise ones who lived in deep reverence of the waters and the earth? What if through working with water we could bring about healing on this water planet? You're an ancestor of times yet to come, called to reconnect with the wisdom of nature and the waters to be guided accordingly. You're a visionary of these times. Connect to the intelligence of waters and the lead. Healing waters activation. I am ready to un unlock the lost wisdom within the waters of the world. I am ready to unlock the lost wisdom within the waters of myself. I am ready to remember and to be led. Mm, so powerful message there. 
or stepping into leadership if that feels right for you and being the leader in your life so thank you for let's read the cards again um, thank you for listening guys I hope you like this reading let me know any feedback in the comments like if you like the video subscribe have a wonderful day gentle self-care and making sure you drink enough water okay bye for now